Welcome to the November Board of Trustees meeting of the Travis Area District Library. We're back on Zoom given the current situation that we find the state and the nation in. So we'll uh, try to carry on the best we can. We have a pretty full agenda. Um, I'd like to call to order and uh, ask that Victoria take the roll and would you uh, indicate um, a role of the trustees, I should say. And when you indicate uh, your name, please say where you're attending the meeting from. I understand that's a new requirement of the uh, remote meeting uh, permission we were given to, uh, by the state. Is that correct, Carrie? That is correct. Okay. So Victoria, would you mind doing that? We'll start with um, I'm in my home. You have to indicate like city, township, like that. Oh, my home here in Traverse City, Long Lake Township. And Victory? Trustee Victory? Yeah, he's here. Oh, there he is. Would you indicate your, where you're attending the meeting from, Mike? From my home, Traverse City, in Traverse City, downtown. <clears throat> Who's that, Vicki? Vicki, we can't hear you. Could you say it again? Yeah, I'm not going to see anything. Uh, uh, Traverse City. And Sullivan. Was here. Is Susan Sullivan, uh, uh, Carol Sullivan here? He's muted right now. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. I'm attending from my home in Traverse City Peninsula Township. Okay. And Adjurs? Here uh, at my home in Traverse City. And Jones? Uh, here at my home in Life Lake Township. All right. Uh, just please, we have a whole agenda. Is there any... Uh, changes to be made to what we presented earlier in your packet? If not, could we have a motion to approve the agenda? Um, so moved. I just wanted to make, I, I know I emailed everybody, but the agenda still has new business behavior policy hearing. So that'll be moved to December. So we can remove that from the agenda. I was going to table it, but that's cool. <clears throat> so moved. That, so moved with that change, Susan. Thank you, Susan. Support? Support, Carol. Very well. Uh, Victoria, please call the roll. Okay, starting with Westcott. Aye. Vickery? Here. Yep. Aye. Yep. Okay. <laughs> and Fikizer? Yes. Sullivan? Present. Other than I? Yes. Okay. Hodgers? Yes. Jones. Yes. That's six Thank I you. We, we now have an agenda. That was um, painful nonetheless. All right. This is our first uh, moment of public com comment. If you are uh, wanting to say a few words before we begin the meeting, please do so. Um, Victoria, would you please call the roll of those non-trustees that are on the call? Um, there's Victoria, Susan, Carol, Susan, Carol, Susan, 
And I see um, Melissa. Do you have any public comments? You're muted as well. And we also have a view only, no comment. And that's all that I see. And so I understand view only, no comment, and then public comment is muted. They don't care to make any, and Melissa didn't care to make any. Did we get any emails or um, anything else for the meeting? Not current. For public comment. No. Joe, I had muted. something I wanted to add. Just a moment, Susan. Uh, Michelle, you're muted. Sorry about that. Um, Aaron, I do see uh, someone just has their name as public comment. So maybe you could. Yeah, so they had their phone number published up there. So I just changed their name. Um, currently, um, I've asked them to unmute and they have not replied or taken any action. Okay. All right. Okay, Susan, uh, you cared to say a word? Yes, thank you, Joe. I wanted to let the um, everyone on the board and everyone on the call today know that after our October meeting, uh, several members of the community contacted me about an amendment to the Open Meetings Act, SB 1108, which I'll get for everyone. I just found more of this information today. But basically, it says that I could have uh, voted and be marked as attending at the meeting in October. And other members of the community with disabilities were very concerned about this. So I just wanted to put this in public comment. All right, thank you. Um, if you would like to take that to policy to see how, if we need to, um, uh, brush up on our policy. I, I would appreciate that, Susan. Okay, thanks, Joe. All right, our next uh, our next uh, piece of business is the public hearing on the 2021 budget. I'd like to introduce Michelle Howard that will make the overall presentation. We'll also have a public comment after that. Um, as I looked at this budget. Uh, in preparation for the meeting, it looked pretty good to me, uh, especially given our circumstances. It looks like, well, I'll, I'll let Michelle uh, share with you what, uh, what she plans for the coming year. But uh, with that, uh, Michelle Howard. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Joe. I just want to thank a really quick all the department heads and, of course, Deb. We worked many hours. We met with all the department heads. There was a lot of discussion about where we're going and what we're doing. So um, this budget was a lot of work from a lot of people and I'm happy to present it. So I'm gonna share my screen and I think that'll make it a little easier to go line by line. And- Michelle, uh, before I, you do, can I ask a question? Sure. Um, sure. Did, did we need to open up the hearing with a, a motion? Um, I think, Carrie, I think you do. Yeah, after um, the presentation of the budget, then you can open up the public hearing. Okay, yep. thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Okay. so I will share my screen. Can everybody see everything? Because once I share my screen, I can't see you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, so uh, you so all received my budget narrative. So I'm just gonna scroll down. Um, these are all numbers that we pull from our proposed budget, our projections that you got, and then our 2019 actual budget that we get from our auditor. And so that's where you see those numbers um, going through. And I'll kind of address the issues that I mentioned in this commentary as we go through the line by line version of the budget. Um, and so that'll help explain kind of what we're doing. And it's kind of near the end here. Um, so here's our budget that we put forth. 
And um, the in so on the income side, you'll see that we are getting um, more income from levied taxes, and that's our tax base. Our, um, our percentage of the tax base that we get did go down because of the Hadley Amendment, but it still overall results in a 4% increase in our budget from the levied taxes. Um, the next, next nine is the PILTS, delinquent, property taxes, other things. Um, these numbers have been kind of all over, but holding stable to going down a little bit. So you'll see from our budget in 2020, we did take it down just a little bit because we, we aren't sure um, what's going to be happening with those um, line items um, and if people will be not paying their taxes and then paying their taxes later. So we've been really conservative with that number, which shows a, a little decrease. Uh, state aid is up this year, and that was through the work of um, a lot of work of Wayne Schmidt and our legislature that increased overall state aid um, by a million dollars, which you'll see equals about $6,000 extra for our budget. Um, so that number is reflected there. The state aid for the talking book library is always the same, it hasn't changed in years. And then our local grants you'll see is up significantly um, percentage wise. And that's because we know we have some grant money that will be coming in in the next year. And part of that is the, um, the LSTA grant that the services got with Newton's Road. So we didn't spend all that money this year. So we are getting some next year. So that's why you'll see that local grants is, is up from 10,000 to 18,000. Fees and services, um, those, that's money we receive from the services we provide to other libraries, and that's pretty stable. Um, sales, you'll see, is down, and that's because we just don't know what's going to happen. So typically, that's copier sales is a significant amount of that. Um, Heather's been doing an amazing job with our merchandise. It's been great, great. but um, we still are projecting some decreases. Um, just because we don't know what's happening. So we've been conservative there. Uh, same with overdue. Same with overdue. We are, are really conservative there. Of, of course, we um, it could be more, it could be less, but that was our best guess based on the year. Um, so you'll see that number's down significantly. And I'll also be going to the policy committee to discuss whether we want to remove some of those fines permanently. So that'll happen in December. Uh, penal fines is another thing that over time has gradually, gradually decreased. So we were conservative with the number we picked. Um, we were surprised with what we got last year, but we still have a feeling it's going to go down. So better to be safe than sorry on that. Interest and dividends, again, it's just from our investments. So we always put that number of 15,000 in just to be safe. Okay. Um, rental fees you'll see is um, down significantly, and this is a lot of the money we receive from renting um, the McGuire room. And just not knowing what's in the future, we again were conservative with that number. Uh, contributions we are down a little bit. We know people are struggling to meet, so we adjusted those expectations for donations. Um, reimbursements is is the same as in the past, and I'm forgetting, Deb, what is the reimbursements again? I think it's on here. Oh, overpaying funds. That's right. Um, it's for sometimes we get a check from, a, from the township or the county, and then we actually have to refund some of that money because of people um, contesting their taxes. So that's what that amount, dollar amount was there. So you see the total revenue is up 1.5%. Uh, Any questions on revenue? Uh, why I'm curious. Uh, this is my first uh, time doing a, a budget review for the library. Um, what accounts for the, the fluctuation in penal fines? In penal fines, oh. so penal fines are generated from tickets, um, uh, way stations, um, uh, penal fines from the court. So it depends on uh, how much how many things are going through the courts, how many tickets police officers write. And so over time, that money has decreased. Um, it's statutorily allotted to libraries so that um, the legislature can't take it away from us without a, or constitutional, I think it's in the constitution, um, 
can be taken away from us, but there are some things that some governmental agencies are using to try to um, whittle away at that money, but that's basically why we just, there, I think there's just less money going in penal fines. So it doesn't reflect a drop in the crime rate? No, it no, might actually be things that um, like pulling people out of the system to try to put them into um, uh, like, um, uh, like the drug court, you know, to try to get people on the right path instead of penalizing them. I see. Okay. Any other questions? Michelle? Mm -hmm. This is Susan. I this I wasn't sure where this question fit in, but I wonder: Do we do our own payroll, or do we send that out? No, we send it out. We pay a company, ADP. You'll hear their commercials on NPR if you listen to them, um, and so they do that. We it's, okay. it's, a whole, it's a whole system that we pay for to do the payroll and timekeeping and all that kind of stuff. Okay, and which category would that be under? That goes, that's under, um, is it fees and services, Deb, I'm pretty sure, because we pay for that service. Yeah. Oh, no, that would come out of um, our um, expenses. Expenditures. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, expense side. I have a question, uh, Michelle, about grants. Um, the, the only line item is, from, is called local grants, um, and I know you've been uh, very proactive, looking for a host of different grant sources. Um, is there another category that's not local or not limited to the local grant area? Um, no, I think um, I think we just put all of our grants in local grants. Um, predominantly in the past, it's mostly been grants from local agencies to the Talking Book Library. And the Northline Co-op always grants us back uh, money that we give them. And so, um, but, but in the last year, we really worked hard to get other grants, but I think it just all goes under local grants. Yeah, it's, it's, if I can jump in here, it's basically just a name that uh, we could change it so that it's not local grants and just says grants to kind of avoid the confusion. Mm -hmm. I, uh, by, by way of follow up, uh, uh, the 84% increase is huge. Um, is, do, you, do you think, is it part of your planning, Michelle, to uh, forecast that into the future beyond 2021? Uh, not necessarily that rate of growth, but uh, do, you, do you see that growing um, at a, a reasonable rate? You know, I think it depends. Like this year, we have had a lot of opportunity for grants with um, the terms act stuff. Um, I just, I know it wasn't always a priority for the previous directors to look at grants, but I know we've um, just with knowing having a deficit budget, we know what the money's out there, and we've really been working hard to to boost that area. I can see us keep trying. Um, we've been successful. We've had some no's, but the money. You know, I think it's just taking the time to do it. So, yeah, we definitely plan on continuing that that path. I don't know if we can keep making that much, but we'll we'll keep trying. That's for sure. Oh, excuse me. If you're not muted, would you please mute yourself until you're speaking? We're getting a lot of um, uh, chatter in the background. I'm sorry, Michelle. Please go ahead. Um, yeah, we'll just keep keep trying for the grants. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions about bud, uh, revenues? Okay, I'll scroll down to expenses. So again, same format. You'll see what we actually paid in 2019, what our budget was in 2020, where we're at projected to be, and then our proposed budget for 2021. So the biggest line item in this whole this whole expense side is, of course, our people, which we value, and they're great. Um, but you'll see we are projected to be less um, significantly in salaries, and that's because we've reduced hours, and we haven't filled just a few positions um, this year. So you'll see there is a 
projection of, projection of uh, I, I can't do the math that fast, but maybe 130,000 out of personnel. Um, but the money goes back up for 2021 because we're hoping that uh, through the pandemic, we'll have some resolution with the sure, vaccine yeah. and we could go back to full hours. Um, we just haven't seen the demand yet. So we did put full hours worth of payroll in the budget. And so overall, that's about a 1.7% because we do have one retirement. And so we are saving some money there. And we did have some retirements in the past, which have, past, which have kept costs down kept because costs. people who've been here a while obviously cost more. Um, and so you'll see it's, even though everyone got a 3% raise from the union contract, um, it did keep some of those costs down. I am hoping to add at least some hours in the local history room. Um, and that money is in, uh, in, that, in that salary. I've been working with a local history group um, they're really excited to um, be a part of the library. I know it's been a hard year for them not being able to be in and helping as much as they want, but um, we'll, we'll see where the end of the year falls and then we're hoping to add at least some hours of a staff member down in the local history collection. Um, we do have someone down there right now, but I, I think we really do need more. Um, it's a great asset to our community. We have constant reference questions about it, so we really identify that as an area of growth for the library. Um, Social Security, Medicare is um, about the same. Uh, the medical insurance costs went up this year oh, about 4%, and we also have more people opting into this benefit as an employee, so you'll see that raised up 6% um, over the past um, same with the EPA FSA, um, that's the employee assistant program that we pay for, and we do have to keep some money in the FSA account, um, even though no one, no one do that. Yeah. Our vision insurance, same with the dental and life insurance. We did switch life insurance companies because um, the company we had went up significantly so we could realize some savings um, by switching life insurance companies, so we did. And then um, retirement and is based on, you know, the formula that we give employees, how much we put in and how much they put in. And then our $10,000 a month is how much we pay towards our unfunded liability. And that's the same. It does look like there's a big significant drop, but that's because in the projected budget, you'll see the money we added in from last year. Um, or this year, middle of the year. So basically at the end of the year, if there's any money left over, half of it is split between the public improvement fund and the MERS unfunded pension. And so that's, you'll see that was an extra $110,000 this year that was added to that line. So it looks like a decrease, but it, it's just, we commit to spend, to paying 10 a month, even though we're only required to pay eight. Um, so that's why you see that jump. And same with retirement, unemployment, um, we haven't had any claims there, so we lowered that down significantly. We did have a workers' comp uh, claim this year, so we added some money to that because we know that will go up because of that. And then our disability insurance was basically the same. So any questions about yeah, personnel? Okay. Hearing done. Okay, great. Uh, going down to supplies, you'll see that um, our supply budget is up a little bit, and that as a result of, I mean, it's still down from 2019, but we are going to replace all the computers in the personal computing center. So that money actually comes out of supplies because any item under $500 comes out of the supply budget, um, not anywhere else. So it, it feels a little weird, like, feels like that's a lot of pencils and pens, but it's actually any, any item under $500. Um, so in library materials, you'll see um, a, a big investment of 4% over last year. That's a matter of, um, we always try to hit 10%. This year we're hitting 11%. And that's an investment in our digital resources. Um, we know we're going to have patrons who don't want to come in for a while, and I think they all got used to it and really love it. And so we're investing in some additional um, resources for people to use and just funding that budget so that we know we have enough in there. And then the um, report and ma repairs and maintenance is um, just planned repairs and maintenance planned repairs. supplies of stuff we buy. I think that's um, 
Deb, is that like toilet paper and like that kind of stuff? I can't remember what comes out of the. That's where Bruce, if he needs to go get light bulbs or yeah. things like that, that he is using if he needs parts to fix a toilet or something, the small yeah. things that he's not having a contractor come in to do. Okay. Um, any questions on supplies? Okay. And not hearing any. So we're going to go down to services and charges. So professional services, this is where we pay for that ADP system and attorney fees, uh, snow shoveling, carpet cleaning, um, all that kind of stuff comes out of professional out services. Of um, and we, we just took that down just a little bit based on last year's budget, but it's still about the same um, as 2019, um, the, at the, the budgeted for 20. Budget for 2020, not what we paid in 20 in 2020, um, and we're seeing a lot of savings there based on um, just not needing services when we were closed. So we um, saw some money there. Communications you'll see is up uh, about 29 percent, and that's because of our Wi-Fi hotspots that we are loaning out to people. That comes out of the communication expense to pay for those. Uh, travel and expense you'll see is down about 28.9 percent and that is our um all of our educational travel which we took out of the budget for 2021 most of the conferences are already uh, are already saying they'll be virtual so we're not factoring in travel to those conferences but we are factoring in but we are um, the fees because we value education. So all the fees are in there. It's just, it's down a little bit because we're not traveling anywhere. Um, then our outreach advertising printing is down and that budget Latin item had some money in it in case we had a big event, which we don't foresee in the future. So some of this where you see we're cutting the budget is where we found the money to put into library materials. Um, let's see, we had insurance and bonds are about the same, utilities, uh, we projected exactly the same, same with repairs and maintenance, we kept it the same, just, just stepping into the unknown of what 2021 will hold, we thought it best to just keep everything the same, uh, but you will see that we have not spent a significant part of the repairs and maintenance, and that was just us being cautious uh, discussing with Bruce about where we want to spend money and we just we just couldn't commit no you know knowing that we know we don't know what's happening so we kept that dollar amount the same but you'll see we didn't spend very spend a, the whole thing this year uh, member member library payments we go up 3.6 percent that number is based on um, every year Deb calculates the how much of an increase in our budget we get from those top revenue lines and then we um, take whatever increase percentage increase that is, and then we pass it on to the members. So you'll see they're all getting some extra yeah. money this year, which is nice. Um, awards and recognition is just exactly the way it sounds. Property tax reimbursement is paying back those people who, um, if we ever get um, bills for taxes that got bills. changed, we have yeah. to pay those back. So we always keep some money in there. Uh, use taxes for the items we sell or bought, yeah, sell online. We do have to pay use tax. Um, and then capital outlay is um, the, okay, I'm blanking on this one, is just what we're, do we have any projected, um, what is, Deb, can you help me out with the that's, capital outlay? Anything that's over $500. So if um, large purchases like um, technology type stuff or a large, you know, repair item, boiler or something like that. that furniture, right. Yeah. Significant furniture costs. Um, yeah, so we have that, that down a little bit because of some of the previous stuff we've done. And then contingency is we keep some money in contingency for some of the work we do with the other outside of our, dis like outside of the members and branches. So we keep um, $2,000 for, I think, Kingsley, Interlochen, and Sutton Spade. So that contingency money is there, and then just $1,000 from us. So that's where you'll see uh, the total for this year matches the of expenses, met balances with the total of revenues. And then you'll see the total from projected from this year 
Um, and again, these are our best guesses about what our expenses are. And so that number underneath the expenses at 392.068 will be what's left over, um, as long as everything goes as planned. <laughs> so any questions about that? Yeah, Michelle, um, uh -huh. Mike, um, the, the travel and education budget is the one that would be used to support professional development in a normal period, correct? Yeah. Yes, correct. Um, so if for some reason things um, opened up and there were opportunities during this next year for professional development um, to be pursued by everyone, uh, are we... Have you talked about that? I mean, what would be your contingency? Because I think there might be a little pent up demand for, uh, you know, getting out and uh, learning things. Um, just a, I mean, it's really more of a, I'm curious question than a, a numbers question. Did you talk, have you guys talked about that? I mean, if, if we got lucky and things opened up, would we be having enough money in the budget to support people? Because I would want to be saying yes mm -hmm. to, to that. Yeah, I agree. We, there is some money in there. Like we, there's always enough in that budget usually for people to do stuff. We did not plan on any travel money. So the nice thing about our budget is if that did open up, then we could come back to you and move some money around um, based on what we're spending money on. It would, you know, it's not, it's not a huge chunk of money and it would be not, about $19,000 um, to you know, add to that fund. So, yeah. you know, we could see if, if we do get to do this, I, I can't imagine it would be before June, but we could also look at our revenues to see if we somehow did bring in extra money and find money to fund that. Because I agree, a lot of people are going to want to go to conferences and yeah. it's, it really brings a lot. I mean, we've got some really fun ideas yeah. coming up from the people who attended just the Michigan Library Association and our teen librarian attended the teen um, group meeting recently. So, um, yeah, I think it's, it brings a ton to our library. So we're going to have, we'll have to reevaluate if that happens. Um, but right now we're not playing. It'd be a good problem to have. Yeah. It would be a great problem to have. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and one, one other particular question, um, um, repairs and maintenance budget you have, um, identified here, uh, are we prepared for a worst case scenario outcome on the roof repair? Yep. Uh, the worst case being we got to redo it. Yep. Yep. So that money would come out of our public improvement fund that doesn't come out of here. Okay. So out of repairs and maintenance is just things that keep the place going. And so, um, and so I'm, I'm going to do like a deep dive analysis about how much we've spent out of it. And Bruce and I have been working on a, capital improvement plan. So we kind of know when things are going to go and we can maintain that. So right now the money that's put in there is kind of our best guess, but we're trying to really drill that down into a better forward thinking plan than well, just in case. Um, but yep. in we have about, I think 2.5 million in our public improvement fund. And so if I think the worst case estimate for a completely new roof, which would include a cold roof, basically they would just put a cold roof on um, is about 1.3 million. Right. So yeah, we're, we're covered if that's the case. I've, I've been reassured that it won't happen, but you just never know. Yeah. Pretty good. Okay, great. Any other? Michelle, Thank this you. is Susan. Susan. Um, I don't know if this has ever been discussed um, or where this fits as well, but I'm wondering, do we always intend to keep the building that we have? Is the plan to always be at that site and uh, repair the building, maintain the building, or are there any other contingency plans? I get asked this by people in the public all the time. You know, I've read a bunch of the minutes from before I was the director. I've never seen it discussed, but I think Joe's been on the board for a while. I, maybe he could shed some light. I don't know. I've never heard anyone say anything about leaving this building. Um, but Joe, do you know anything? Uh, well, that's true. You, I've never heard anyone discuss leaving the building. Um, I can't, I can't foresee a reason why we would want to but you know 
we didn't want to have a pandemic either. So maybe, maybe we could begin or have a subsection in our, our strategic plan as to, you know, physical or facilities, what, what our intention would be as we go forward. But uh, no, there's been no discussion in the past for that. So it, uh, it wouldn't be a bad thing to keep in the back of our minds, I suppose, but nothing, uh, nothing ever came before. The context that people have asked me about it for everyone is if we outgrew our physical space, do we have the room to add on or was the property so valuable that we would want to move to another location um, and sell the property or if that's even possible? Just those kinds of questions. Yeah, I, I, again, uh, I think that might be a good discussion for strategic planning, but uh, I'm rather limited in my foresight. I, I can't see why we would want to do that, but you know, it, it would probably be a good thing to talk about. Uh, and there might be some reasons to uh, have that uh, plan in place. Thank you. I have a question. Uh, Michelle, what's, Mary Lee. What, what's the rate of um, employee turnover? Oh, I don't know, Deb. Do you know? I mean, no, people, uh, people don't leave here very much. Um, <laughs> actually, I, I don't have the percentage. I have never actually worked that up. Um, our, as far as, as the turnover, the number of what the people that turn over are usually our lower paying jobs because we hire either retirees or college kids that, you know, are in motion. They're either going to retire completely at some point or they're they're graduating from college and going and getting another job. Our professional staff is more steady and a, a number of them have been here for 20, 30 years. <laughs> so it's uh, we're pretty stable in that regard. Right. Because the reason why I ask is um, high turnover rate actually causes deficits in the budget because of the cost of orientation and getting them up to speed. So the, even though people who stay longer make more money, they also are usually more efficient. And also they have that institutional knowledge, which is priceless. Yep, I know um, a lot of people come and stay because we do offer part-time benefits. And so a lot of times, and according to the union contract, we have to post within and so, um, so we get a lot of our full-time employees from within our, our part-time employees. So people kind of get on as like a page or um, as a substitute. And so then they can see those jobs being posted. And according to the union contract, we do hire, um, or we don't, we don't have to, but we have to have a reason why we wouldn't hire a union employee. So um, sometimes you don't even see our jobs ever get posted. Um, because we fill it from within, because we have great, you know, we have part-time benefits, like nobody has that. So we can, we'll figure that number out though. It'd be good to know. Are there any other questions from the trustees? So I have just one, uh, Michelle, Joe, uh, and, and maybe this might not be the venue for this, but it occurs to me that I want to ask it anyway. Um, uh, it's more of a, uh, more of a what if than a, 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 a material empirical question, but um, we don't quite know what the uh, impact would be of the economic the economic impact of the the, the downturn that uh, COVID is um, exacerbating, but didn't didn't initiate. Um, so where are we most exposed uh, in terms of budget and planning? Mm -hmm. um, if, again, kind of a worst case, uh, just being aware of what that might be, what, where, where would we be most exposed? It would it be the property tax revenue? Yep. So when I looked at the 2008-2009 recession, it didn't hit the library's budget till three years later. And that's because of property values take a while to go down if they go down. Right. And so that's and really what I'm watching more property values and the real estate section of the newspaper. 
um, because we see property values still holding stable, if not rising. Yeah. And they're still building downtown, they're building on A Street, they're building all on um, State Street. And so though when I see those things, it makes me feel a little less nervous about our future. And we know how many people are moving here right now. So as long as our property values stay high, and you even think about what happened to the real estate market in 2008, um, what we did see was our um, property tax continued you know, up, and then it went stagnant, and then it took off again. And so it wasn't ever a, a really big drop. Um, I think a lot of people bought those properties up when they were foreclosed. So, um, so I think that's our biggest, you know, because that's the largest chunk of our budget. If we lost all of our state aid, if we lost all of our penal fines, you know, that would be tough too. Um, and we, and we did that exercise this spring when we thought we might lose it all. Right. And, um, and that would have to come out of, you know, we, our plan was to take some of it out of our, public, or out of our, uh, building fund or not building fund, but the, um, repairs and maintenance and you know you put off those things that you need to do and of course our library materials is where we would have to cut and so when we went through this exercise all education left all you know all our materials budget dropped by a hundred thousand dollars um our you know travel and education our and our repairs is kind of where we would have to find that money but um right now i'm 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 feeling okay about it because of the sales happening in the building. Thank you. I appreciate that. I just, you know, it's um, about the budget proposed to be reasonable and prudent under the circumstances. And it seems so to me. I just want to make sure, you know, that we. Yeah. And, and you'll see like on our, on our revenue side that we have cut a lot of things that um, I doubt we could go less. So, you know, that's, that's just the reasonable and prudent side too, is on our revenues is, you know, for me, that's the worst case scenario we see in our revenue when Deb and I went through these numbers. Um, so if they were to get better, that's great. All right. Any other questions, trustees? Victoria, would you uh, care to call the roll of the other folks on the call and see if they have any public comment to offer? And do we have to open the hearing now? Yes, yes. Yep, oh, we need a well motion then. to open the public hearing. Thank you um, for keeping Joe, us on track. Joe, I'm uh, sorry Susan? to disturb you. Oh, Carol. Um, yes. Susan just said she had to move to a phone. Oh, She just sent okay. me a text. I, I don't know what it meant. Ah. Well, um, we still are looking for a motion to open the public hearing. I move that we uh, open the public hearing. Thank I support. You. Thank you, Mary Lee. Uh, Victoria, Mary Lee supported Jeff's motion. Can you call the roll to open that meeting up? You have to unmute. Sorry about that. Um, okay. um, what? One more time, Ms. Cat. Oh, aye. Thank you. Uh, Vickery? Aye. Caesar? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Adgers? She had to move for some reason. She's, she's muted right now. Susan, you're muted. Can we come back to her in a moment and go with Joan? Uh, I. Okay. And Adrian? Can you unmute? I'm asking her to unmute right now. Right now. Thank you. I was going to do Excuse that. Excuse me, but the message she sent me, it sounded like she had to move someplace. So yeah. she would I understand. Be I understand, but she's rejoined the, the call. And we're showing her muted. Oh, okay. I'm pardon me.
Well, why don't we uh, assume that she's abstaining and uh, open the meeting? Is that permissible, uh, Carrie? Did we do the role of the entire board? Uh, the entire board and Susan is not responding. Okay, yeah, I mean, she just, I will just treat her as stepped away for this motion. We still have a quorum present, so it's fine. Okay. Excuse me, Joe, she just sent a message that her unmuting is not responding. <laughs> okay. Ask her uh, to go to our meeting going forward. Um, so that was five, was it five eyes? Five eyes. The motion carries, the meeting, the hearing is open. And now, Victoria, can you solicit uh, any public comment from uh, anyone on the call that would care to make it? Okay, uh, looks like we have a few people. Um, Heather, have you any public comment? I have not. Okay, uh, Melissa, do you have a public comment? She's muted. Is muted, so I'll take that as no. Um, we do have someone listed just as public comment with no name. Do you have a comment? Uh, is that Doug Weaver? And maybe my phone. Yep, Could be. Oh yeah, that must be you, Doug. Okay, the, there's still the other one. So there was none from Weaver. I have no comment. Okay. And we have a view only, no public comment. I assume that means that there is no comment. Would that be correct? We can give them five seconds, I believe, to go off mute. And if not, uh, we assume they make no comment. Since they haven't unmuted, we'll, we'll go forward then uh, with no further public comments for the budget hearing. Joe, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can. Hello, Susan. Do oh, you have a public have comment no public about public comment? The and I, okay. I vote yeah. aye on the last item. Excellent. Great. Uh, so our next item, do we have to close the budget hearing to make the vote? Yes. Then I uh, would like a motion to close the hearing. I move that we close the hearing. That was Second. Jeff. Second. Yep. That was Susan seconding. Um, Vicki, would you please call the roll again? And starting with Westcott. Aye. Vickery? Yes. Caesar? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Rogers? Yes. Jones? Aye. Thank you, that's six ayes. Six ayes, the, media, the uh, budget hearing is now closed and we can um, move on perhaps to the budget resolution itself, which I believe we have a copy of some nice words to do that. We did have copy. Yes, um, would someone like to, to make that resolution? I would like to make the resolution. Please go forward. Should I read it or should I, can I just say it's written? We accept the resolution is written for the 1920, I mean, for the 2021 budget. Why don't you read the resolved and the total, total numbers given? How about that? Okay, just a second, I had it. Resolved that the Estimated revenues for 2021 result in the following total amount for appropriation. And the total amount for appropriation was uh, 5,641,380. Further, that from this total available, the following appropriations are made. They listed that, and it's again, 5,641,380. Thank you, Carol. Is there support for that resolution? I support. Multiple of trustees support the resolution. And Victoria, would you mind calling the roll? 
Muscat. Aye. Bakery. Aye. Caesar. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Adgers. Aye. Jones. Aye. Thank you. That's Six good. ayes. The resolution has passed, and uh, we now have a 2021 budget. Awesome. All right, now the fun can really begin um, in that we can continue on with our meeting. And uh, I'm looking for a motion to approve the mid regular meeting minutes of October 15th. I so move. Carol has moved. Support. Mary Lee has support. And uh, is there any discussion? None. Victoria, we're going to have to pay you overtime tonight. <laughs> uh, Westcott? Aye. Vickery? Aye. Caesar? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Rogers? Aye. Jones? Aye. Thank you. The regular minutes of the October 15th meeting have been approved. Can we have a motion to approve the minutes from the special meeting we held on November the 10th? So moved. So moved. I'm sorry, Four. that was uh, Mary Lee and Susan? Sure. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, you're correct. Victoria, would you mind calling the roll for this vote? Okay, Westcott? Aye. Victory? Aye. <clears throat> Pekizer? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Sullivan? Yes. Rogers? Aye. Jones? Aye. Aye. Six ayes means the minutes for the special meeting of November the 10th were approved. Uh, that brings us to our favorite part of the meeting, the reports and communications section. And our first report would be from Michelle Howard. Okay, great. Um, so I uh, gave you the traditional report we always do, and you'll see that uh, e-resources are continue to be way higher than they were last year, um, and our books are creeping up on it. Um, we won't hit the numbers we had last year, but um, we continue to see people using our books. Um, I know at one point today they did over 40 curbside uh, deliveries in an hour, so we um, will see people have really learned quickly how to switch to curbside. So I, I assume these numbers are going to continue to rise um, even if we are closed, the building is closed right now. Um, you see, we, we were hitting visitors, um, which is part of the decision to close the building. We were hitting um, almost up to um, 900 visitors a day. Our average was 850, 821. Um, and so, and the busiest day had 965. So, so we are still a very busy place. So I'm, I'm really glad I feel a sense of relief about um, closing the building um, and still being able to help our patrons. Um, other than that, you can kind of read the report. A few things to point out um, that I'm particularly excited about is we're working with Traverse City Health Clinic and we're gonna have a social worker in the building uh, on Wednesdays from 1 to 5 p.m. This was um, something we kind of talked about in my review, but I figured I'll refresh it here. Um, and this will be someone who will come in and work with our staff and patrons to provide social provide social community. community. And it's an outreach function of the Travers Health Clinic. And we hope she will still come in even if we're closed. Um, we we're planning on trying to do either phone service or just her helping our staff. So we are looking forward to that. We um, are going to start offering the beta bus passes. That was a big effort from Anita in circulation and Heather in the marketing department where we'll have three beta bus passes a month to circulate to patrons to try out beta. We're just giving it a try to see how it goes, but I think that's going to be a really great service for us to offer uh, patrons, they won't have to return anything. It's a car, a little cutout thing they get. Um, it works for, I, th I think, two weeks. And then um, once it expires, they just throw it away. Um, but I think it's going to be a really nice service for our patrons to try beta. And for those who don't, 
um, maybe have enough money to use beta to back those out. So um, we have that. We, um, I did check in with Grand uh, Traverse County and it, I think you'll, if you've read the papers, you know they are on reduced staff. They had a number of COVID infections. So I don't know anything else about our board appointments, um, the empty seat, and I know uh, Mary Lee is up for appointment again. So as soon as I find something out, I will let you know, but haven't heard anything. I, I did get an email about interviews next week, the 24th from the county. Oh, no. from, okay. So, yeah. I will email them. I had not gotten that. You want me to forward it to yeah, you? That would be great. Um, that would be great. Um, and then I've also met with, also or been emailing with, emailing, um, with NMC and they are doing some diversity, um, equity and inclus inclusivity. Um, they call it DIE, we call it EDI. It all means the same thing. Um, they're starting an initiative at their library and on campus. So we will be um, doing that together and um, it's still in the planning stages, but I know our teen department has already done a um, diversity audit of the teen collection. And we're looking at doing a diversity audit of our adult services and our youth services. And so we'll be working together with them to do some community-wide diversity, equity, and inclusivity um, events or training, or we, we're still like on the ground with that. So um, that'll be a good event. And I'm looking forward to working with them about that. And then finally, I just wanted to finally, let you know, uh, last weekend we did have a, a very uncomfortable incident at our Kingsley Branch Library. Um, with a patron refusing to wear a mask, um, being aggressive with staff. So um, I did suspend him for six months. Um, he was demanding to know my home address. Um, basically what happened is I did send him an e a letter um, explaining our policy, asking him to please cooperate for the good of our community. And I know what, you know, I said, I know it's hard times and I, we've sent, I've sent a few of these letters out and have had very positive results. Unfortunately, this time it wasn't positive. Um, I'm working with the sheriff's department to get a trespass against this person um, because of some of the threatening language he used and demanding to know where I live, um, which is never a good thing. Uh, it happened when I was a city commissioner where I had to tell my kids to lock the doors and don't answer the door. Um, so <laughs> we're doing it again because um, we just, we don't know. Um, sometimes it's just a little nerve wracking. There is a little nervous. So um, I've had a, several calls into the sheriff's department. They haven't called me back just um, because they will notify that patron uh, that they are not allowed to trespass on any of our properties uh, because of what they've said and, uh, and accused us, said we were lying, um, said that we can't prevent them from coming in the buildings, that they don't have to wear a mask. Um, just, you know, really argumentative language. So I assume that they will request a hearing. Um, so we can be ready for that probably <laughs> maybe in December, but it was, it did rattle our Kingsley staff pretty bad this weekend. So, um, just thought I'd let you know about that. So we were another reason we're glad to be closed right now because right now. there's high tensions, um, with masking. And so I think these three weeks will be a nice cooling off period. So just so I'd let you know about that. Any questions? Um, I did have a question about the closure and uh, the steps that we've been taking, you know, besides curbside, you said mentioned something about setting up like a computer station uh, near the front. And I just wondered, have you done that? What's the demand for it? Uh, do you think, you know, what do you think? We think there will be some demand because um, patrons, a lot of patrons don't have printers. And so we're doing two things. We're going to set up two desks um, yeah. in the lobby and like in the lobby and in the vestibule of McGuire with a staff member there, the PCC center staffs will be there. We're also setting up the ability for patrons to email in any documents they need. We will print them and take them down to curbside. Um, so all they have to do oh. is send an email that whatever they need printed in and we will uh, bring it out to their car for them. 
So I think we'll have demand. I, um, you know, I do these little surveys of uh, all the class six libraries and most do offer computer services. Um, we, and especially depending on uh, everything in the world, but people might be filing for unemployment. For unemployment. Um, people just sometimes need to print out documents that need to be signed. So we, we, we I think it'll be used. We're gonna wait and see. I think we could expand out to three if we need to, but that will start on Monday. And the staff person that's at that uh, workstation, besides a mask and the other kind of mitigation uh, processes we're going to take? Yes. Yeah, so we have face shields. We just printed a bunch. So we're making face shields for all the staff and we'll have plexiglass. And um, we're even putting a fan in that area um, to just keep air moving besides the um, ionization system we have. Um, and they'll be big, at least 12 feet between everybody. So it'll be a, a big gap. And I think the staff will feel safe. If it, if it starts to feel bad, we'll, we can stop it. You said that the patrons would set up an appointment. How long are the appointments for? Only one hour. One hour. Okay. If it were like a student taking a test, um, you know, we, we figured we'd leave a little leeway. So uh, if it's a student yeah. taking an hour and 15 minute test, you know, let it go a little bit, but um, I have noticed our parking lot is very, very busy right now um, with people using our free Wi-Fi. I noticed Wi -Fi. It. Yeah. Did you notice that when you looked outside, it's like, right. oh. yeah, so we, um, we, you know, so we're serving people's needs that way too, but I think the computer will be helpful. Michelle, this is Susan. Michelle, I have a couple of questions. Okay. Um, is, are we still going to offer our notary service during this time? We were not because you can get notary at a number of other places. Um, you can okay. banks do it. Um, I don't think the county is doing it right now. Um, they might be doing it by appointment, but um, I, I think there, there's a lot of places you can get notary from. Okay. And I also got the email that Joe spoke about for the ad oh, hoc for interviews. The ad hoc. So I just wanted to say what date that was in the Times in case anybody wants to tune in. It is on November 24th. There's two applicants. One is at 510 and one is at 520 p.m. Um, yeah. And Michelle, the other thing is the Human Rights Commission is going to be giving out um, uh, uh, grants for materials like what you're looking for for the library. So uh, I would encourage you to apply. They're up to $500 because we have to use our budget uh, by June 30th, and we haven't been able to do some of our traditional events. So um, just go on our website. You'll see the form. It's it's pretty simple. But I really love the photos in the uh, department and director report. I think that's just great. And excellent job on getting the word out. I mean, between the ticker and the video and the articles and the press release. And when I think of us having a social worker and the bus passes and all of that. I mean, we, I think we've all known we've always been the community hub, but we are absolutely the heart of this community. Uh, I can't thank everybody enough. Thank you. Thank you for saying that, Susan. Yeah, I feel like we're really, um, we're even through bad circumstances, we are hitting our stride. Right. We're, everyone's yeah. being really great. So proud of our staff. Um, that's it. Um, I just had some observations out of uh, adult services. I, I'm really glad they're beginning to prepare for the pumpkin uh, activity in February. I just hope that the pumpkins aren't too cold when they're. <laughs> <laughs> Let's and see. Aaron, I, I know you're on the call, so I wanted to point out to you that uh, you, Sight and Sound kept ha Halloween scary. And I know that because I saw that it uh, pumpkin when I was in there. Great job. Really enjoyed that. <laughs> and that finally, really I don't know if this goes to the youth services or you, yourself, Michelle, but uh, I really would like to see the two beans, three libraries, and ISS video. Is that something that you can put on the website? Uh, um, I, it was part of the Michigan Library Association, so I don't know if they're going to release those right now. I just got an email the other day 
they're releasing all the sessions to people who paid for the conference. Um, I don't know if they'll be made public. So if they, I'll find out if they are. Um, yeah, it, it was a, it was a really fun uh, fun event we had, and um, we kept people going in the chat. And Heather had a great idea to raffle off a T-shirt and. Um, a lot of the libraries were really interested in the work we're doing with the International Space Station and Ted Higami at Maggie. Yeah, at Maggie. So we'll be, um, we will be part of the experiment in February. So we'll be pulling those exo labs out again and having a good time. I think it's called Legos in Space. Yes, that's right. <laughs> All right, very nice. Um, Deb, would you like to move into the financial area? I can. I uh, actually did not um, hear much tonight because of going over the budget and having all of our projections on the budget. Um, and we are getting down towards the end of the year. Uh, mostly if you have questions I can answer those um, on the revenue side we're, we're pretty much got the revenue we're going to get um, Michelle did as I put in my report um, she got another 10,000 that she had applied for f to help pay for the ionization and some of the PPE that we the uh, plexiglass and so forth that we have to put in um, so that was great and uh, the friends gave us a huge uh, amount this past month. Also, they paid for our ancestry, which they've been doing every year. And they also paid for the uh, sending out the newsletters. So that's always a big help. So thank you to uh, the friends for that. Um, otherwise, on the expense side, it's, it's just normal stuff. The, the bills are coming in and we hope to cut everybody off here in the next week. And, um, that's it. <laughs> so it's just then it'll be monthly bills coming in, but no more purchasing of materials. We cut that off at the end of November. Okay. Any questions, uh, trustees? Died on me. Huh? All right. Why don't we move on then to our member library okay. reports? And I see interlocking and uh, okay. Peninsula have braved the weather to join us. So uh, Interlochen, would you like to go forward first? I'd be happy to. Hello, everyone. Um, well, I see, what have we been doing? Um, basically, I'll, I'll say this first, as of January 1st, um, we will have a new director at Interlochen Public Library. Her name is Jennifer Tomet. She has worked at our library for 10 years, or not 10 years, five years, I'm sorry, as a part-time person. And during that time, she has been working on her MLIS, and she will have that in um, May. Um, she is much, much younger than I am. So that's, that's always a good thing to have fresh, fresh blood uh, <laughs> working at the library. And she is full of enthusiasm. I think you will all love her. Um, she couldn't attend tonight. She has uh, young children at home that she had to pick up from school. But I that's hope nice. you will all welcome her. Um, that will be January 1st. Next month, she will attend, I believe, your, your board meeting. Um, so saying that, Jennifer has also been writing um, a whole new pandemic response uh, policy or, or uh, procedures manual. It's great based on the my OSHA requirements. I think many of the libraries are doing that right now, figuring that out. Um, as far as our, our hours, we are 10 to 3 for the public for curbside pickup. And um, just yesterday and today, we have had more um, curbside pickup than we ever had be the first time around. Today, I think there were near 30. For us, that's quite a few uh, cars lined up along the, the road in front of the library, which is very unusual. So we're pleased with that. 
the patrons are not only picking up books, but they're picking up craft kits that we have for the children and um, grab bags of books. They just call and say they want that. Um, it goes along with our, some of it goes along with our digital story hour that we offer on, um, uh, on Wednesdays. And so the craft will go along with that story hour many times. Um, the friends are planning something for the Christmas uh, holiday time for the children. I don't know exactly what that will be, but they'll announce that soon. And it will probably be a pickup, curbside pickup type thing or a drive through the parking lot uh, thing. Um, we also have uh, our library board approved our 2021 budget um, Monday. So we're all going forward with that as you are. And in regards to the financial situation, I wanna thank the Traverse Area District Library for your generosity and sharing your millage money with us and uh, pleased with the increase. We're, we're so grateful and we really do need it. It's, uh, it, we have a lot of expenses that are unusual for us, as you know, with your maintenance and your building and things like that, it's new to us. And uh, we, we learn more about it every year we're in there. So we really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, let's see if there's anything else. We may do the computer um, uh, that, that the patrons can use the computers to the laptops, perhaps in our conference room, it's outside of the library and we can limit it to one person at a time. Um, we're hoping to do that. Um, we're going to follow, follow Tattle's lead and learn from, from what they're doing. And uh, we, we just want to make it as easy as possible for our patrons in the community out there to have services that they need. Uh, we are also doing the print and faxes um, by email or if they hand it to someone we'll, at the curbside, we will run in and make a copy or whatever for them. So... I think I rattled off enough, but this is my last meeting. And I, I again, wanted to thank you all. And um, I have appreciated knowing you and I will drop in now and again as a public uh, participant, but I just want to really thank you. You've, you've been a wonderful group of people to work with. Well, thank you. It's a, yeah, I can speak for myself. It's been a pleasure not only knowing you, but uh, in working with you through the several years that we've been together now, I guess. So good luck in your retirement. Thank You'll you. find that you are very happy being yes. retired. <laughs> I, I think you are right. I've heard that from many people, they would actually give me lessons on being retired. <laughs> you know, it's a new business. I might take that up. There you okay, go. Thanks. 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 Wishes. And will you be joining uh, your new person uh, in the December meeting, or you're just going to send her in? No, I will time. not be. I'm using my um, the last of my vacation, oh. starting December 17th. So I will officially be employed until the end of December, but I will be on vacation. So, <laughs> well, enjoy both. Thank you, thank very, you very much. And Vicki, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. I want to wish Renee the best. I've gotten to know her over the years, and. She's Thank been um, an incredible director to work with. Um, I look forward to working with Jennifer, but I will certainly miss um, Miss Renee. So I wish her the best. Thanks. And we too um, have been busy with curbside. Yesterday and today we're nonstop, surprisingly, much busier than the first time around, um, which is nice. People seem comfortable with it. Um, we are also offering games and puzzles with the puzzle bin that we had on our front porch during the shutdown is back out there and we've refilled it several times already. So it's nice to know people are enjoying that. We have the new STEM kits from Newton's Road. Those will be available next week. Um, so those people can check those out as well. The last, it was Tuesday, the last day that um, we were able to be open, it was nonstop busy, uh, mostly with 
parents who are homeschooling their children. They checked out at least half of our juvenile collection. Um, you know, we assured them that everything that they were checking out that day is available curbside as well. And these are young parents who are comfortable with online, um, but um, they wanted to bring their children in. It was kind of fun because it was actually the first time we'd seen the kids in here in a long time. They had been playing it safe. Um, both little free libraries are open. We actually have two, one in the children's garden that's filled with children's items, and then the one in the front with adult items. Um, and people have been accessing those um, for several days. The craft bags are hot items. Um, we started out making about 20, 25. Uh, the last time we had them available last week, we made almost 50. They're gone They're already gone. before the end before of the, the month. month. So we told people they could reserve them and um, possibly, possibly we'll be looking at making more. We also suspended notary service. Um, we don't do it virtually and it's rather hard to keep safe in person, but we, we will do emergency computer use if people make an appointment in the lobby, as well as um, any print and faxing via email that people want. We did quite a bit of that yesterday. So people are adjusting. Most patrons have been very kind. Um, I have had actually email, emails of thanks and calls from patrons um, for the libraries keeping them safe. So. Um, I, I think we'll get through this together. Um, I do welcome a new board. We're a township library and every four years, potentially all six trustees could go off. Um, three trustees chose to remain to run again. So I have three um, experienced trustees and three new trustees. And um, as soon as I have addresses and um, contact information, I will send that to Vicki and Michelle so that you have that as well. But I'd like to welcome John Bersini, Lori Brickman, and Nikki Sapkowski, Sapkowski back to the board, and Nancy Davey, Britt Eaton, and um, uh, Todd Wilson. Um, they're new to the board. We did make arrangements with Foster Swift and Serenic to do a board training via Zoom. And she's doing that for all of my board, of but my especially board. the new trustees, December 2nd. So we're excited about that. Um, programming, um, of course, is all virtual. We've discovered here, at least, that the Homes Fund programming works better. I have not had great attendance at performers I've paid via Zoom. But um, I, which Wendy, who is me, <laughs> um, who normally does the storytelling on, on the pumpkin walk at the school, was asked to do it via Zoom. And it's not quite as impressive without the, mid the evening dark lit, pumpkin lit walk through the woods. But I, which Wendy did it from her living room and actually had um, 64 attendees between homeschool parents, um, students, the younger students at Old Mission School, and then others who signed up. Cruz Paniagua, who's a staff member here, also did a Day of the Dead program based on her family's own celebration, and she had 62 participants. So we've had really good luck with that homespun programming. Um, what else can I tell you? We're still working on the drainage issue. Um, <laughs> we're guessing that way back um, in ancient times, um, a river probably ran through here from the hills. We're downhill from everything. And um, we're probably going to wait till spring. Uh, we had looked at French drains in the children's garden, but we don't want to do anything. We don't want to put a Band-Aid on it. Um, we may need a second retention pond um, behind the building, but we'll make sure we do the right thing before we do anything. Mm, what else can I tell you? Oh, we're running a really fun Who Done It um, via email in the Old Mission Gazette this month. Um, the PCL staff, um, they're both the sub suspects and the victim. So if you get the Gazette, um, please look at that. We'll, we'll have a, anyone who gets all the right answers, will put their name into a drawing for a basket of old mission goodies at the end of the month. It's been kind of fun. My staff doesn't even know who done it. So um, they'll be surprised as well. What else can I tell you? Um, I do want to thank you as well for the, the sharing of resources not just financially, financially is huge, but the tech department through all of this has been incredible. Uh, Michelle has been a great resource, a shoulder to cry on sometimes, someone to um, release steam with at other times, but I'm so grateful so to grateful. all of you for what you do for us. Um, as far as circulation, uh, books really were only a hundred down from what we checked out um, in October last month. So it, it 
it's not too bad. Yeah. We're, we're doing well in that way. A program attendance in October, we had 361 people at 11 programs. And that's yeah. also on that's track, also which on is track. surprising giving the virtual aspect of it. But people are looking for things to do and they're grateful to all of the library. So thank you. Well, thank you. Um, just want to point out that uh, Renee has said we share our, our millage uh, with you. We don't share anything with you. This, that comes from you and we're just distributing it back to the community to provide library services. So uh, just to pick you on the, on the word that we use. Um, the next item on our agenda is committee reports, finance and facilities from November 10th. Who wants to do that one? I'll do that one. Okay. Uh, I'll start with facilities. Uh, you've probably all read the report, which covers everything, except that we did discuss um, what we wanted to do, projects that we wanted to do as soon as in, in 2021 and beyond. We ranked those priorities. Um, number one was the sorter, which because the warranty is expiring. Um, Number two was improved lighting, which would save us a lot of money. And three was remodeling the bathrooms. That was the big thing that we discussed in finance. Um, and then, I mean, that we discussed in facilities. In finance, first of all, I wanna thank Michelle and Deb for all the work they did in the budget and, and explaining it to us. I think we've got a great budget. We yeah. also um, recommended that Michelle get a raise and that her salary be increased to um, $95,000 a year, which still just leaves her 33 out of the 43 class, li class uh, six libraries. I don't know whether that uh, salary increase has to be improved, approved by the board or not. I would think it would. I would think so too. And you can make a motion to that effect uh, yeah, at the end of your report, I guess. Well, that is the end of my report. And then I would like to move that um, our library director's salary be increased to $95,000 a year. Support? I may have misspoke, Carol. Uh, perhaps a better time to do it with under old business when we talk about the review. Okay. Oh, the director review. I just, and I'll then, do it. Okay. I apologize, but. No problem. Upon that might be better. And I see that we had a policy and personnel uh, meeting from November the 10th as well, but there are no minutes. Is that correct? No, those minutes were approved. Um, well, aren't those the ones that uh, wasn't that the special meeting? Oh, that special was the special meeting. meeting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. Sorry. Uh, so do you want to say any words around that, Mike? The purpose of that meeting, the pur yeah, the purpose of that meeting was the, uh, was the uh, review conversation with Michelle uh, and um, the, um, uh, I guess what I would say about that, it was a very, I thought it was a very um, delightful, informative conversation about um, uh, what the library is doing and the role that Michelle is playing in, in meeting the goals of the, the title system. We were all very um, appreciative of um, all of the efforts Michelle has made in such a um, demonstrably positive way to the library. And um, I, I think that the takeaway of those th of the conversation are two. One was the, the uh, discussion of uh, salary based on the review. And the other was um, kind of a, an expression of interest in the strategic planning exercise coming up as a way to pick up and carry forward some of those some of those ideas and and interests uh, that came out of that conversation it was it was very uh, very helpful to that moving forward we thought so with that the the minutes captured that in a very uh, cryptic way but that that's, that's what that conversation was about yeah, it's really good all right thank you uh, we can move on then to the friends Doug Weaver still on waited patiently for his uh, moment in the sun? Uh, I am uh, here, although the sun is about set outside. But uh, I know. Uh, so I wanted to kind of update you on how our, uh, we're doing on the uh, fundraising efforts. Uh, we, we had good success with our, our move-a-thon, our walk-a-thon in October. We ended up 
uh, getting good participation of, I think, probably about 50 people and pulled in about $1,500, which was nice. And then we started our bag sale, um, which uh, taking pre-orders for that, the bag sale is a curbside bag sale. We're going to uh, distribute those out at the front, uh, uh, front of the library um, on December Saturday. So far, we've gotten 70 orders, and uh, they're coming in um, consistently every day. We're anticipating we could have as many as 200 by the time we stop uh, the orders. Uh, folks are, are ordering, on average, three and a half bags. So um, we could have up to 700 bags or so that we'll have filled with uh, books and CDs and DVDs. So we're, we're quite pleased. Um, we're, we're looking maybe at about $3,500 there, and that coupled with the move-a-thon gets us to 5000 which is just about what we had budgeted for the fall uh, book sale. So, um, so I feel really good about the board and how they've chipped in and come up with some great ideas, and, and uh, we're pretty excited about this bag sale. So it's going to work out great. Uh, beyond that, we're uh, working on our budget, annual budget. Uh, we've got that pretty much together, and we will approve it at our December meeting. Uh, that does include continued funding for library programs, including summer reading, Ancestry.com, and the newsletter expenses. That totals, again, about $14,000. So um, all in all, the group's uh, pretty excited about what's going on. They're excited about their ability to kind of uh, figure out ways to keep uh, busy with the COVID situation. We feel very strong uh, looking at the new year. Um, not only the vaccine news <clears throat> is, is positive, we think by this time next year we should be back and back to normal with uh, sales. Um, but in the meantime, in the spring, we plan to do some more uh, bag sale and, and other kind of innovations to kind of keep things rolling. That's All it. right. Anybody have any questions for the friends? Thank you, Doug. Appreciate you joining us. Uh, uh, can I just express appreciation for the creative uh, solution to the no no sale problem? Um, that was really really uh, well done. The walk upon and the bag sale. Yeah, thanks. Uh, you know, one of the things that we wondered about when we, if you remember a year ago, we, we introduced this new um, uh, program, web program that allows us to take, uh, manage our membership online, but also uh, to take uh, donations online. But then uh, the, the third benefit is the, the ability to f function as an e-commerce gateway. And so <clears throat> we're really putting that to the test. We put it to, to, to the test with the move -thon. And we're certainly doing it now with the bag sale. So that really does open up some merchandising opportunities for us, I think, next year. That's terrific. Thanks, Doug. Yep. All right. Uh, we'll move into our old business section. Uh, on there, we carry over the director's review. Um, as we all know, we did have a meeting uh, in personnel and and Mike took the lead on compiling the uh, reviews of the various trustees and we read them out to Michelle. Um, as it says in the, the meeting packet, uh, she met, exceeded or far uh, greatly exceeded all the things that we asked her to do this year. Um, I can't say enough of how pleased I have been with her performance especially considering the fact that we're, we've been in this, this strange pandemic uh, place for the last year. Obviously, no one had planned on that when she hired in, and uh, I think we're glad that we did hire her, though, as, as well as we've come out of it. Um, are there any other words trustees would like to say or, or uh, add? I just underscored, Joe, your comment. I, I'd like to that, I mean, Michelle exhibited not only the skills and talent and experience that we, we thought we were getting when we hired her, of course, but she also got stress tests uh, <laughs> in a way that, that you don't typically expect and exhibited great uh, uh, grace and great. skill and the pressure. Yeah. All right. Um, now becomes the time we can talk about any yeah. salary. Yes, Susan. Um, 
Yeah, I was having trouble um, unmuting. I was going to say something about Doug Weaver, but I'll move on. One of the comments you can that say I want to make. He's still here. He'll hear you. Oh, oh okay. Well, my, my question, Doug, was about um, 700 bags, just that you're real confident that you have enough product and how you're going to decide meeting whatever anybody's form is requesting. Yeah, we've got we've got plenty of product. I think um, we've got uh, you know I, I think we did run out of Christmas CDs. I heard from Margaret today, so we quickly took that off the website. But I think we're really deep on pretty much everything else. Uh, but we are keeping an eye on that. We're ready to shut things down if, for some reason, we're really tapped out. But I, you know, at any one time, the, the, the third floor space is is um, just really jammed with books. And in fact, we've stopped taking new donations. So if we if we can empty that place, it'll be a, a great thing. I I don't think 700 bags is going to make a huge dent in that. Okay. Thank you. And Joe, my um, comment about the director review, you can still hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, one of the things that I want to say about um, the increase for Michelle is I think that it's more than warranted. And I also want to let people know that I hear from folks from around the state that um, were interested in the position when it was open the last time, and also younger librarians that are looking down the road after Michelle has retired. And one of the things that is out there in the, in the library world is that our salary was not really adequate enough for attracting lots of candidates especially with relocation costs. So I'm really, I'm really glad to see that we're doing this for many reasons. Well, thank you, Susan. Any other comments? Uh, Carol, would you like to bring forward your motion at this time? Yes, I would like to, like to recommend that we uh, compensate Michelle Howard uh, starting this in 2021 at $95,000 a year. Support. Okay, it's been moved and supported by Mary Lee. A move by Carol, supported by Mary Lee, that we increase the director's salary to 95,000. Is there further discussion? I'm well, surprised we had a very interesting in-depth discussion about wages. And I'm yeah, glad that- I, I can only imagine. That's why we sent it to finance. So, uh, <laughs> I will say, I, let me say this. I and I hate, I hate to be the the bearer of bad news or the the Debbie Downer. And there's nothing wrong with Debbies, but uh, I, <laughs> I think this is very, very generous. I I would, in in my view, I would more rather support the 7% raise. That said, um, the motion is on the floor for 95,000. And I think Vicki, can you call the roll? Well, I, can I respond to that, your, your concern? Uh, sorry, yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right. When we had, um, the because I, I was in that meeting, when we looked at all of the salaries that um, was shown to us, one of the things that was very interesting that the male directors substantially made more than the female directors with the same job and with the same level of responsibility. And I don't, and, I, and that's concerning because what Michelle does is equal to what male directors in the survey was doing as well as female directors. And when we talk about disparity in income, this is a glaring example of that. And that's one that's of the reasons I was very supportive. And the fact that she came in and has done an excellent job in a most trying time gives you all an idea of her commitment and her ability to adapt and to grow into that position. So I'm strongly supportive of the $95,000. Um, $95, 
Uh, and Susan, I see you've come on, but I can only assume you're in going to voice your support as well, especially knowing that, and it was a fact I didn't know about the perceived low uh, figure that when we open the job up for um, uh, fill, being filled. So I would say that that reason and Mary Lee's strong uh, support was why I'm ready to go to vote. Does anyone else have anything to say? Please do. Seeing none and hearing none, Vicki, would you call the roll at this time? Yeah. Westcott? Aye. Vickery? Yes. Teaser? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Rogers? Aye. And Jones? Aye. That's six ayes. The motion passed and we can now award a raise to our director. Thank you for your efforts, Michelle. It's well earned. We all really appreciate what you do. Thank you. It, it's really my honor to serve this community and with the board together. Um, I only see great things happening with all of us and our members and branches. So I appreciate the vote of confidence and the positive review and of course the race. Thank you. Okay. Um, next item on old business is the district library agreement. I don't think we've done any work on that. Um, Bites Lake isn't on. I think they were our first target. Uh, Joe, this is actually the agreement with the Library of Michigan because Susan oh, wasn't was on the call. Um, so, yeah, we'll start with the member agreements with finance next month in gotcha. December. So this was, um, I think Susan had some questions that she couldn't answer and um, Carrie. Just, um, yeah, the form that we saw or the, the letter from the library that we had in our package. Right. I, I apologize for the mistake. Uh, Susan, did you want to talk or speak to that uh, letter you were talking about uh, December 1989? Okay, um, so briefly what I would just say is that it's my understanding that we need to submit this uh, amended form to the Library of Michigan. And I would like to see us do that. And I also wanted uh, Carrie to address the board and just talk about um, what, if any, barriers are in the way of that. I know um, that we don't want to risk any of our state funding, and it's my understanding that uh, we just need to submit this. But the Library of Michigan uh, wants everything to continue as it has. It's a technicality to get the form turned in. And I thought that uh, Carrie did address this at our last meeting, and she said that it wasn't, um, that this agreement only says that there are seven members of our board. It doesn't really matter how they're appointed or in what numbers by which of the two entities. Um, I, oh, she is joining Yeah, here. I, I'm here, I'm sorry. I, for some reason, my video isn't working. Um, yeah, I, I just kind of to reiterate what we talked about at the last, meeting oh here okay maybe we can maybe my video will start now hold on yeah no still not okay oh that's okay um so to reiterate what i mean the, every indication is that we're fully in compliance with the district library act right now um as you can see the letter um approved our compliance with the district library act back back in 1989 we're getting all of our funds um uh, that are available to us through the, uh, the Library of Michigan. Um, the approval back, so just a, is some history. So originally the district library was formed um, under the old act, under an old statute um, that's no longer in existence that was ultimately replaced by the district library act. The district library act uh, at the time, it, and it was based on this agreement between the city and the county um, to form the district library under that old statute. And then, um, and then it was put to a vote of the people um, back in the early or the mid eighties. I don't have the exact date in front of me and it was approved. And then the district library act came along in the late eighties 
and according to the district library act in order for us to be approved under that act is we needed to submit our library plan we submitted our library plan pursuant to the form that was provided to us by the uh, library of michigan and that was approved um, as you can see in the uh, letter that's included as part of the agenda and our library plan with respect to our membership was just that we had seven appointed board members um and I'm not sure whether like through the 90s or whatever the how the county and the city if how they they went about appointing their member or their members to the library I think it's always sort of been kind of driven by the city and or the county how they how they go through that process of appointing their members um, I don't know whether there's been changes you know through the 90s or whatever but back in the um, the the early 2010s um, there was a discussion about um, giving the county an additional no not the county yeah giving the county I think is that correct the county an additional member and um, at first the, there was discussion about whether that needed to be submitted to the uh, Michigan, the, the Library of Michigan for approval under the District Library Act. And it was determined at that time that it didn't because our approved plan is that we have seven appointed members and we're not changing our approved plan um, with respect to the um, respect to what was approved. And so the memorandum um, of agreement was entered into between the city and the county um, just to reallocate the uh, number of members each uh, each had and how they how they picked them or kind of their priorities or criteria for picking them. And so basically, um, you know, under the the way that I read the District Library Act and the way that I read our approved plan, um, I, it's, it's consistent with the way that it was understood back in the early 2010s by um, the former library attorney, Chuck Judson, and um, the city attorney, Lauren Triple Out at that time, and then the uh, county attorney, I believe, was Robert Cooney at that time. Um, is that there was, was no need to submit that to the Library of Michigan, and I still think that there's no need to submit that to the Library of Michigan under our plan in the district library. Yeah, hey, I'm still in the meeting. Where are you? Okay, when do you think you'll be done? Hopefully, in the next five minutes. Where are you? Where are you? Merely, we, we can hear you. <laughs> so, if, All right. does, it, does anyone have any questions based on that kind of background and history as to where we where we were and where we are now? Well, Carrie, I have. I guess my concerns are: we have a open library seat, and I think that what the the rule, if you will, um, is that we have a preference for meeting the open seat based on city or county, but it is not uh, mandatory because one of the fears that I have is that with COVID, we may get fewer applicants for open seats. And I, I just want us to look for the best candidates and, and be clear on it for that reason. And then I guess that if the Library of Michigan disagrees with your opinion, where does that leave us as a board with that amendment. I, I Maybe we just leave it as it is. I know that that isn't their opinion. So I guess I'm unsure what we would lose if we, if we resubmitted the document. Yeah, I mean, I've asked uh, the Library of Michigan to provide me their analysis and I, I haven't received an analysis that would um, change my opinion on the thought. And I mean, I think we're, what we lose is that, you know, you know, we, you know, we were, uh, we were incorporated, and that's, a, I'm, I'm not using that in the technical term, under a, a certain act, and then, um, you know, reestablished, or not reestablished, but affirmed in our establishment under the District Library Act, under a plan, and, um, you know, I, I just, I think that, you know, we shouldn't have to get approval when we don't have to get approval. I mean, you know, we should keep our, you know, that local control uh, with the library and with the city and the county. And with respect to how the county and the city or the county in this case appoints their members pursuant to that memorandum of understanding, 
you know, as before, the library really doesn't have any, you know, kind of uh, dog in that hunt. Um, that's really the county's uh, responsibility to follow the agreement pursuant to the terms of the agreement. And, and that's really up to them how they go about appointing board members um, and, you know, they and how they follow that agreement. It's Tettle has never, the Tettle board has never had any um, involvement or interference with that process. Uh, uh, can I ask a question here? Um, um, I, I'm sorry, Carrie, I, I'm, I, I couldn't hear very clearly everything you were saying, but the, the document you're referring to, is that something we should see? I mean, should we be seeing that document? Uh, the plan that we submitted for approval? Yeah. Yeah, I'd be happy to uh, provide it for the board to review. That would be helpful, I think. I'd, I'd understand it better if I could see it. Mm -hmm. uh, the, um, the, I guess the question I've got is, uh, I'm trying to make sure I'm clear about sure. this. So we've got the general approval of the libraries of Michigan to operate under a model that has seven appointed board members. And then the agreement to divide that those board member appointments between the city and the county according to some formula is just a local operational agreement. Correct. Correct. Yep. Okay. And so at one point that formula or division, if you will, was changed to give more representation to the county, to, uh, more more opportunity for more seats to fill by county appointment than. Uh, city appointment, right? Correct. Yeah. In in and 2010, there was a form or right. 2000 early 2010s. There was a formal agreement entered into between the city and the county for that allegation allocation and you know kind of how they were going to look at those appointments. And there was some argument made for why that was important or justified in some way to change that representation. I suppose. Yeah. Right. Yep, there, right. there was it's there was an argument made and um you know the county and the the county and the city agreed agreed with one another and i don't even think that i'm pretty sure that tattle's not even a signatory to that agreement i'm i'm 99 positive it's an agreement between the city and the county and um there was an argument made. I was not involved in the negotiations or the the why why it all happened because I actually wasn't the city attorney at the time, nor was I the library right. uh, attorney at the time. Chuck Judson was, um, but looking back on the file, it was, um, you know, you know, just a I think kind of an issue. I think at that point, like the county and the city were looking at a lot of their arrangements, and Tattle was one of them. Right. And Susan right. may have more background on that than I do. Well, before, before Susan, before you uh, say, just I want to extend that one last thing. I mean, sort of, so that all, all trustees sitting tonight listening to this are sort of caught up to speed. Uh, we're at the point where we need to clarify again with the libraries of Michigan what our uh, operate our um, trustee system is. Is that what we're trying to do? Is clarify that? Beyond, we have seven trustees. I, I don't think so, and and that's the that's my, you know, my reading of the District Library Act and my reading of the plan is it's not an amendment to the plan, and so therefore there's no need to run that by the Library of Michigan. Yeah, I, I wouldn't think so either. But so here, here's what I'm I'm coming to is like, I'm I'm maybe other than Joe the only person maybe on the. On the on the team now, actually, that was around for the last brouhaha about this, and that was when Susan was a uh, was being appointed, and the county was making an argument that um, one of the criteria they were using in making appointments to the board was they wanted all districts in the county to be represented, a kind of a representative model of trustees for the district library. Um, I'm just describing, right? And I, I never understood whether there was or there was not an actual document that stipulated that that was the appointment procedure and process the county uh, and the city, or at least the county, 
had agreed to or decided to follow that all districts had to be represented on the board. Is there that is, a, the there is an agreement between the city and the county and that it, it, it talks about, I don't, it talks about, you know, kind of how they're going to go about the selection process. Right. And that was the subject of, there was litigation um, when the whole appointment process went. Um, it was, I think, a person that wasn't appointed that filed the litigation. The, uh, right. We did not get involved in the litigation um, because, again, it's not our agreement. It's not our process. We've never gotten involved in that appointment process. Per process. Um, it's not typical for, you know, entities that are created by other entities you know, who then appoint members to it for them to get involved in that process. That's kind of their process. Not yeah, I, I, yeah, I agree with that. I, I'm just trying to clarify whether there was, whether there is or isn't some sort of document that it says that the point in representation of, on the library board will be by district in the county. Yes, I believe yeah. that the uh, agreement expresses a preference. Okay. And I, if you would like to see that agreement, we can, I, I can get that, I can distribute that with the plan that was submitted. I'm to not sure board. what problem we're solving here. I'm just trying to clarify my, my, own, my own thinking here. Excuse me, my understanding, my understanding was that was they wanted somebody from each district, if possible, if somebody applied and was qualified. And at some point in time, probably in uh, 2010, uh, the, one of the commissioners always served in the library board for a long time. They selected a commissioner to serve on the board, but then when they cut the number of commissioners, you know, they're too busy. They didn't want a, a spot in the board, a county commissioners. Hmm. So I think it's important that we stay with trying to get the members from around the area. It's just my opinion. Or right, Carrie, you'll send out a copy of that agreement that you have in the, in your records and um, the, the plan. plan that was approved. Yep, I will. All right. And Carrie, right. if you could also ask again for the Library of Michigan analysis and why they think submitting the form is important, and then share that with the board, I'd really appreciate that. I think that, I think might, that might bring it full circle. Yeah, I'm. I you know I'm not. As I indicated, the, the Library of Michigan has not conveyed to me uh, why they think it's important or why it's required under the District Library Act. They've expressed that opinion to me, but they haven't provided, provided me with an analysis. And of yeah. course, if I get an analysis, I'll be happy to you know, share that with the board immediately. And um, Karen, I did discuss this at length, and I did even go through Gail's old emails, and I don't remember the exact date, but I, it was in January of a couple of years ago that um, there was something from the Library of Michigan saying, I will follow up with you um, and from the um, lawyer librarian there, and um, we never received anything from her. So um, we were all, we were kind of under the assumption that we keep getting our state aid um, nobody's questioned it. We, you know, we, we file all of our stuff. There's never been anything. So that's why we assumed that it was the same analysis that, that Chuck Johnson and Carrie use is that our original document hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. And so that's why so we that's why continue to move forward without, forward without, but we'll see if we can get anything from the library of Michigan. So <laughs> just to clarify, is this analysis supposed to be a notice to us that we are deficient in some fashion of our structure? We or have not received a notice of deficiency to the best of my knowledge. So really we're kind of talking uh, hypothetical that someone, I don't know if Susan went and had this conversation in passing with someone that we were deficient in some fashion because of the way we had appointed our uh, directors in the past couple in the past years but we have not never been noticed officially by the library of michigan is that correct correct all right well uh, until we get a notice uh i'm not going to worry too much i think we're i think we're okay and i'm pretty sure that they're not going to withhold uh library funding without some kind of notice in that that would open them up to some kind of uh, restitution mm -hmm. that they would have to make. So, 
Yeah, I agree with that, Joe. Thank you. The next item was our, uh, are we finished with this? Any other comments? Um, had a response to COVID-19. I think we talked about this all night. Um, yeah, said, Joe, this, this was me, Joe. I asked Michelle to put this on the agenda. I just wanted to make sure, I don't know if it can be a, a regular part of the agenda as we go through the next few months, but I just wanted to make sure that we, you know, at one point, Michelle was on a multi-member uh, committee in the community uh, advising about COVID. And I don't know if that group is still meeting or will reconvene, but I thought that might be a place for some updates and, and that all of us on the board were really clear about the tri triggers for when we do any kind of new restrictions related to COVID. And if there was anything we needed to tweak about our COVID policy or um, any violations where we where those get reported, um, some of the things Michelle made mention of today, um, if someone you know is is found to be positive or violates our our protocols, um, just I don't know if it's something Michelle just can keep in her report or just that we have a place for that kind of information. Yeah, and um, Susan, I, I'd be happy to add that to every one of my director report is just like a cool update. Like I am still on that committee. We've been meeting every Friday since we were meeting weekly or daily for a long time, and now we meet weekly. Um, and that was what kind of started the conversation with the members on members on was the well with the um, both the health department report and the library or not library the hospitals report and just their fear of public exposure and just community spread. So um, the, <clears throat> the unfortunate thing is we did make the pandemic response plan with the level <clears throat> levels. I think you guys might remember it. Um, that was based on the stages of the Michigan start plan. And now they've stopped, um, stopped using those stages or have not changed them. So now there's a new scale that I'm looking at to change our, it's like a contagious scale that they're using like A through E. So I'm gonna um, adopt this again, but I, I followed the pandemic plan that we talked about and checked in with everybody. And um, so it's, it's like our, the rules of the game keep changing too, but um, a number of libraries are closed. Um, so I feel pretty happy that we are still offering curbside service um, some libraries are just straight up closing their doors. So um, if, if it gets really that bad, we'll let that happen. But um, I think for now, we're, think for now we're feeling safe. We reduce the number of people in the building drastically. Um, everyone that can work from home must work from home. That's the Miosha guideline. And so we've done that. Um, we've spaced everybody out for their desks. Um, I think we're doing the best we can and still helping our community, but I'll be glad to include that in my director's report in the future. Thanks, Michelle. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we've tabled our new business. Is there any public comment? Uh, Vicki, would you mind calling the role of the public? Okay, um, the public comment looks like we just have um, two people. Uh, Melissa, do you have any public comment? She's not unmuting and uh, Catherine. She said no comment in the, in the chat, but she did put a comment earlier in the chat saying thank you board members for uh, recognizing the outstanding work Michelle has done as title director. Thanks, Catherine. That's nice. All right. Um, any further comment from the trustees? Just to reiterate, um, the Grand Traverse County commissioners are gonna have an interview on 1124. It begins at one o'clock, they're gonna be interviewing all the board member or all the vacancies uh, that they have. Um, Susan gave ours at uh, five and in that time frame, you might want to check the schedule on their website. Um, any, any further comments or a motion? Jeff, you have a motion? 
I make a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Carol. Uh, is there support for that? Support. I support it. Um, Victoria, your final job of the evening is to call the roll, make sure we can adjourn. Okay, Senator Westcott. Jeff, you're muted. Westcott, you're muted. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, sir. I believe Pam, uh, I believe she left. Uh, Sullivan. Yes. Rogers. Yes, and happy Thanksgiving, everyone. And Jones. Hell yes, and happy Thanksgiving to everyone. I hope it's safe and peaceful. Stay and safe, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Good night. Good night. Good night.